Toot, 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 let's all roll for our hobby. Let's all roll for our hobby. Oh, let's all roll for our hobby to get ourselves a crit. Tipsy's drunk as shit. Onyx loves to hit. Ooh, rock's magic is handy. Toot toot's music is dandy. So let's all roll for our hobby to get ourselves a crit. Let's all roll for our hobby to get ourselves a crit. Toot 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 Come friend now lend me an ear For a tale of Victor the Weird He went on an adventure with he, him, and himself And also his mighty fine beard Now gather round, I'll tell you About this mighty beast He may look as human as me or as you, friend But soon your eyes will feast Upon this marvelous creature With many body parts his one shirt may fool you, but what if I told you his chest had four red hearts? One mouth but a thousand voices, one mind and limited choices. Two handsome dice, two handsome dice. The audience rejoices, he's going to play the indeed. With him, himself, and he. Those are his pronouns, it's really profound. It's time for D and D. Featuring Victor and Victor and Victor. And Victor and Victor and Victor. And Victor and Victor. Hey everybody, I'm Victor Rivera, and uh, welcome to D and Me, where I play with myself. I play D and D with myself, and welcome to episode forty. The theme song is produced and performed by Bradley Owens. You can find them at Bradley Ovens, bread L E Y, on Instagram. <coughs> And hello! This is very exciting. 40 episodes, y'all. Um, I wanted to do some quick announcements here. Um, episode th 11 of the podcast is now out. So thank you very much to my dad, Angelito El Wapo, for help editing, doing the um run of the podcast. And again, thank you, Anna Bowder, for help uh, doing the um run for episode 9 and 10. Um, holy moly, I know! Episode 11. And... <clears throat> This is very important. So, um, yesterday for Dean Artistry, we did some art, and I wanted to show some new merchandise. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, the D and Me title card. It's I, I made new coasters. So this is what the coasters used to look like, which were long rectangles of the actual title card itself. But I decided to make them into a square. So these are actually limited edition now. Um, but I decided to make them into a square uh, to get more bang for our buck for the coasters. And then I did the same thing with the pen. And so that. But more importantly, oh, those are so cute. Thank you. 40. Wow. Yeah. Holy moly. Um, but we focused on our kobolds. So this is tax. Shipping and handling as stickers, and you can get them as magnets and stuff. But I decided to go a little bit further with that. So uh, handling, no, shipping um, with his wicker basket and his fanny pack, uh, I decided to make them into bags so you can do your own shipping. So look at how funny he looks with the drawstring bag all stretched out and then all over print tote bag and then cotton tote bag. So that's great. But... For handling, with the the best catchphrase of the show so far, I decided, because Redbubble gives you a lot of options, so I wanted to do some different skins. So, we have a laptop skin, a tablet skin, and a phone skin. And these are legit items. You can get a skin for your laptop and your tablet and your phone with all of, all of that in there. So that's great. And then if you like buttons... I have peen. So that was very exciting. I, I, woof, that's just the best. And uh, get all those out of there. And one last thing. Um, this is what 
handling in my head's perfection skin. So, um, ladies and gentlemen and Twitch users, this is my first emote. So you can go and use the chat thingy to look up Dean Mead skin. So Dean me and then add and then skin with three eyes. So that's that's the most exciting part. I wanted to share that with you. Sarah, that's what I wanted to let you know, which was hilarious because uh, right before the show, during the Dean pre-show, my mom found skin emote by herself. And I was like, wait a second, that was my big reveal. But D and me, AD skin. So um, also, if you look in the chat, then on the right, yep. Mom figured it out. On the right is a little face. So you click on that and then you can look up skin uh, with three eyes. Three eyes. Yep, just to make it complicated. So maybe one more. I also don't know if you need to put a, an at sign in front of it. I love. Good. That's what I wanted. Poppy figured it out. Yep. So. Yeah, Sarah, that's what I wanted to, to share with you. I can't figure it out how to use it on the phone app, but I love. That's 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 perfect. So my first emote skin, which I always knew as soon as it happened, then that was going to be my first emote. So D and me add skin with three eyes. It'll always be three eyes. So again, pin if you like buttons. Yeah, so. That's it. Sarah, you can enjoy dinner. Thank you for stopping by. Um, so that was very important. Th those are all my Dean merch updates because uh, we're episode 40, which is amazing. And I am very thankful. Um, today, in terms of Dean Media, is one of only four days I've ever had in Dean Me where I had a new follower in every Dean Media. So I had a new. I had a bunch of new Twitch followers and a new Twitch subscriber, and then Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all had new followers, and uh, my link tree had new visits and clicks. Uh, the podcast got some more listens, so thank you very, very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. It, it It's validating, even though I do this for me, by me, um, and for pretty much my parents and my sister. Like That means a whole bunch, so thank you very much. Mm. Lovely. Episode 40. Um, a couple D and research after the fact. Ugh, let me... A little bit more headroom. There we go. That turned into a great day. Yeah! No kidding. Um, D and research after the fact. I did this voice last episode. And I couldn't figure out this voice. And I was like, Andy Kaufman, Jim Carrey, no. Um, Thursdays I rewatched the episode and within a minute I figured it out. It's Tony Clifton. Volaring. Silvering. Volaring. Yeah, Dean Mead skin. I, I also don't know if you need to put like a like a symbol in front of it to make it a... I should write... Future Victor? Find out how to do emotes. Because <laughs> it's a complicated like name. But yeah. Skin. Um, and then... Uh, my last little bit of D and pre-show, and then I have a lot of game to play, which um, I I felt like I had pretty much a, a sick day today, so I didn't do a whole lot, and then I felt a lot better at like four, at like five. So I have been scrambling around for the past two hours, and I have a lot of stuff, so this is great. Um, my last little D in research after the fact, my dad actually asked a question. He said, it is a bit hard for me to visualize the saddle of rock because the drawing shows it from the front and looks 2D flat. Would it be possible to provide a profile drawing that shows how far the saddle extends from his chest? Thanks. And I think that's a great question because I always forget about that saddle and it always makes for like, oh, whoopsie, he forgot, you idiot. Um, so, uh... Instead of drawing a picture, because I ran out of time, I take a picture. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's a little bit big, um, like top to bottom, but it extends pretty far out. Like that's maybe like eight or nine inches off the chest. 
Uh, so it's a little bulky and just weird protrusion coming from his chest. And I always visualized it as like these really loose straps that is like if you're wearing a backpack backwards. So a front pack pretty much. And the straps are like around your shoulders, and, but loose. And he always keeps like adjusting it. But when I thought about it for five seconds putting this together, then I was like, oh, so yeah, the, the straps like actually fall down naturally on a saddle. So it would be like putting on a belt, but at your chest. So I haven't figured out. It's kind of when we design the movie, then we'll get into the actual detail. But uh, yeah, I always picture that like straps over the shoulders, but now it's like a weird loose bra kind of deal. I'm wearing glasses for it. That's great. So, um, how is it a, how Rock kisses Paige? That's a good question. And then we'll ask him, um, when we see it, <laughs> dunk, dunk. Uh, it's like two, two cans kissing probably. Uh, and look, my mug matches everything. Oh, that's great. So, um, boy, howdy. I think that's it, huh? All right, let's do a Dean recap. What happened in episode 39, which is called... <laughs> oh, Sneak and Beak. Woo, boy. Yeah, I did not do a lot of my normal work that I do in between weeks. But Sneak and Beak, my boys are... Oh, and let me bring up the map to make it easiest. <laughs> There we go, this one, and then over here. My boys were deposited into the guest rooms of the Restful Lily, and Rock and Tutut realize that their belongings are still in the footlockers in their changing rooms. So, in order to prevent that... Mm-hmm, this one. Okay. Almost there. Cool. And then let's go over to my other scene, which is the map. Way too big. And... Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is that good? A little bit more. Huh? A little too much. A little bit more. Okay, great. So, yeah, um, Rock and Toot Toot remembered that their stuff is still in the foot lockers in the changing room. So, Rock and Tipsy snuck over to try and get it, but in the lobby... Uh, there was one of the nameless employees um, lou lumbering about, and through a very tense horror scene, horror movie scene, then they avoided capture and they grabbed most of their stuff and then ran back to the hallway and to their rooms, but then Tipsy discovered that something was trying to pick the lock into him and Onyx's room, and it turns out that that something is Glimmer, a white um, Kanku, who might not be a Kanku. Um, he's not allowed, he, he can't uh, tell some of the truth about various things, and it turns out that he, though, is an ally, and they went in to gather and then get a lot of exposition in room two with Toot Toot. And after some talk, then they figure out that they need to go and um, take care of business tonight instead of tomorrow morning after some rest. So that's where we pick up. Um, oh boy, here we go. So then Toot Toot goes... All right. Well, <sighs> is everyone as prepared as they can be? I know spell slots have been spent, and uh, Rock, you don't have your relentless endurance. And Rock goes, yes, uh, I do apologize. I didn't know that exercise would um, be the end of me. So uh, before we head out, yeah. And then from 
let's see. Yeah, he would have his saddle back, I guess, because the only things that were left behind were some of the bigger weapons. And he puts on the saddle, which we now have a reference for. And from the horn, which is the knob on the saddle, then from that, then like these purple braids of energy whip out and rope around rock. And he casts mage armor on himself. So for the next eight hours, his AC is better. I will find out how much better here in a second. Um, because that is good for preparation of potential hurting mage armor. So his normal 13 armor class is now 15, which is great. I will write that down in my limited resources sheet to remember 15 AC. Cool. So then Rock feels, ah, I, I feel better. Wonderful. Um, so shall we go forward? Uh, we need to get the stuff and then head out into one of the buildings. Again, Glimmer, remind me, which. what are the buildings? And then Glimmer goes, oh, well, um, the one on the left is the shrine to Seun, and then the, uh, the one on the right is the tower. That is most likely where we are going to encounter the owners of the, um, the restful lily now. Um, but if I may, it is a very bad idea to, to, um, confront all of them all at the same time. It would be best to split them up or to, um, <clears throat> you know, the, um, individual who was, in the lobby to meet you at the front desk? Then Rock goes, Oh, Saith, yes. Uh, tall, um, darker skin, wavy brown hair. Yes! It might be beneficial if we visit him first because he's kind of um, one of the um, obstacles before... The main three. Okay, uh, that is good to know. Um, so, f find inventory, maybe find CF first. Um, we also, Rock points at Toot Toot, we promise, well, we told Serena, the water nymph in the hot springs, that we would also find Silvare, who it was the previous owner. And then if we do, then she will help us tell us more about what is going on. Yes, that is right. So we have a lot of open quests right now. Um, find Silvare Glimmer. Do you know where Silvare is? Um, uh, I know she's not in the bathhouse, brother. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, do you know who she is? I I don't. I was making that up. I, I, I came just a, a couple of weeks ago, so um, I've only been working here... Uh, uh, for a couple of weeks, so I, no one's uh, mentioned it. Silvare. Well, blast. Okay. Well, that's something because if you work in the main bathhouse, then uh, she's definitely not here. Have you been inside the tower? Mm -hmm. Ah, it might say so in the paragraphs of the tower section, but I. I'm going to say that my plot device prevents me from saying so. <laughs> so then Tutu goes, great, okay. Well, um, here's the thing also. Should we... We're going inside the tower to confront the... Th well, shit. It's night now. It's, it's midnight-ish. We need to get circumstance out and take him back to Waterdeep safely. Is he in his room or is he getting the magical treatment right now? Oh. Ah, there's one way to find out. And so then Onyx, who's at the door already, is tired of all this talking, so he reaches behind him, flings the door open. Let's see. I don't remember... I think the door swings inwards. 
Yeah, because otherwise it'll be a fire hazard. So Onyx flings the door inwards and then stomps out. Um, and then my boys are drifting uh, into the the hallway. Uh, wishes perches back on Rock's shoulder and um, Onyx goes to room number four and then <clears throat> with his his plus four strength, his 18, then he knocks on the door. Circumstance. That's silly. Are you in there? And then he listens. It doesn't seem like it. Onyx turns around to the group. And then Glimmer, oh dear, oh dear. Um, and then Rock sprints down the hallway, uh, takes a right, and then sprints to room number six. And then um, he listens to the door. Um, ooh, with his purple die. With a 13. Um... With a natural 20 that AU rolled, then he can hear. <sighs> Light, peaceful snoring in um, room number six. And so then Rock goes, oh, thank goodness. Okay. And then he leads back out. No one checks in on room number five because they don't care about chain go. Um, then they... Um, start um, going down the corridor and they thought they heard Tipsy say okay so oh no Glimmer and Tipsy are becoming one okay so guys um, are, are we just going we're, we're going on a rescue mission to get circumstance now right yes I believe so says Rock Okay, well, do we need any preparations we did, um, Mage Armor? Um, should we check to see if the coast is clear? Rock, you already spent two level two spell slots, so invisibility is not great. How about I sneak out, um, and Wishes, you can turn invis- Oh, and he's gone. Wishes is gone. Um, great. Uh, Glimmer. Um. No. So- Tipsy goes, yeah. And then Glimmer goes, actually, um, if I may also sneak behind you, then I, I am quite stealthy when I want to be, even though I, I stick out mm, quite like a white feather in the dark. But I would I would like to. Okay, cool. Bird bird is with me. Um and then Onyx, and then they turn around and see that Onyx is just <sighs> ready for action. He has his two hand axes out already. Alright, let's go. So, Tipsy with Waddles, and then Wishes. Let me detach Wishes from Rock, because that was obnoxious. Um, Wishes follows, and then Glimmer follows. And so, the other three will be back here in the hallway. Tipsy will sneak! Oh, boy. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Ooh, I have a rogue one instead. Shit, I dropped the rogue one. All right, here we go. Where did that one go? The dangers of... Okay. Whew. Everybody. I have my three giant character sheets there representing my four boys. I have Wishes the Fairy Dragon there. I have Rat Waddle's stat sheet up. I have Glimmer the Kenku, Kenku slash spy stat build. I have one open book here. I have my binder up in there. I have two other books prepped. And here we go. Tipsy will roll. Uh, Wishes will roll and Glimmer will all roll stealth. Pretty good for just wishes w wishes rolled a 19 so um wishes is gone tipsy and uh 
and Glimmer rolled a four and a six, respectively. <sighs> Tipsy. His stealth is plus ten, so that's a fourteen. Um, Glimmer rolled a six. His stealth is a plus five, so eleven. All right. Good shit in Christ. All right. So, as they sneak in, wishes is gone. <laughs> Tipsy s opens the door, sneaks in, and goes over to this little corner. And as he's there, he notices something, and Glimmer kind of bird hops behind him and bumps into him and that's the narrative reason why he got an 11 and then tipsy um shushes him because we see two nameless employees lumbering into the um into the lounge trying to be sneaky uh, duplicate group. Trying to be sneaky. Let's roll their stealth. Eight and a twelve. Uh oh, spaghettios. Stealth is a dexterity. Okay, so that's a nine and a thirteen. So Tipsy can see one employee sneaking in with that nine versus his 14 um we know for audience dramatic irony that there's another one but we'll get there in a second so <clears throat> the employees their passive perception is 10 so tipsy's 14 and then glimmers 11 misses by one which is remarkable so tipsy Ah, sees that sees one employee just walking with one of his arms like behind him and kind of slowly making his way into oh wait hold on 12 13 oh okay so tipsy's 14 okay it does so we see the other namely nameless employee like from this uh point of view okay whew, okay so the scarecrow got a 12 plus one in stealth so that will be 13 versus tipsy's 14 yeah so tipsy's line of sight then he can see a nameless employee disappear into the little alcove behind the wall whoo boy okay um and then um Odds will be the one on the left. Even will be the one on the right. Odd, 11. Okay. So this one. Great. So tipsy with. Okay. He he uses a bonus action to hide. So he just peers around the corner and then just slowly retracts into the space like slowly retracts so that the wall blocks him and with his magical automatic throwing knife oh boy all right here we go yep with his uh, magical automatic throwing knife then he from seeing where this employee is next to the fire the fireplace then he like flings out his wrist and then he hears and that is sneak attack ladies and gentlemen which sneak attack extra 3d6 damage when sneaking so his magical throwing knife automatically hits which is a little overpowered but at right now I don't care so that's 1d6 plus 4 piercing okay so that's a one. Woo! Off to a great start. One plus five, four is five. 
and then, oh, but the sneak attack. So, Tipsy hears a, and then it's damage, which he never really does. That is a three and a six, so that's nine, and then one more. Uh, another three, so 12 damage on top of all of that. Mm, 12 is that many. And, um, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, everything's, everything's starting now. Great. So, uh, let me get another sticky note started. I have sticky notes everywhere too. Cool. So that, and then, because this is a surprise attack. Yeah, since this is a surprise round, then Glimmer, having seen Tipsy pull out a dagger and then have it disappear, um, and not knowing where it is, Glimmer will step kind of catty corner this way, step diagonally, and then see the... Huh. Yep, no, this is great. We'll see the employee like get hit and again this see the employee like oh it's arm shrug this way and he will use his kenku ambusher in the first round of combat the kenku has advantage on attack rolls against any creature it's surprised so with this glimmer will take out his own dagger and fling it let's see what is the range of a dagger thrown 60 feet yes he can do that and hit and he has advantage on this advantage uh, that's a six and a nine nine plus what <laughs> um his dexterity three nine plus three which is 12 which hits the armor class of 11 for the nameless employees so this um, the nameless employee gets one dagger in the left shoulder and then one um dagger in the right one but it seems that the magical automatic throwing knife is stuck in the left shoulder where the where glimmer's dagger just passes through um passes through and then you can hear a clang 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 behind him so glimmer's dagger is out and let's roll damage for a dagger which is 1d4 plus 4 combat 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 1d4 plus 4 that's a 1 <laughs> oh boy oh no Great. Yes. One. So that's. 1d4 plus 4. No, plus 3 because of his dexterity. So that'll be 4 altogether. Cool. Um, and, well. There's, no, that'll actually be only two damage because the dagger passed right through and you can hear it clang 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 over there and then wishes you have a round a surprise round if you want what is your stuff yeah let's do that huh oh wait yeah ooh 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 ooh, ooh. that's very good nope all right. All right. Whoa. <gasps> Wonderful. Wishes will use this. All right, all right. Cool. 
So, Tipsy snuck up to the edge of the, the hallway, looked, and then threw a magical automatic throwing knife. It hits the nameless employee. Glimmer steps diagonally, throws his dagger. It hits, but doesn't do as much damage as you think it does. And then out of this corner of the room, then an invisible wishes um, becomes invisible, comes in wishes becomes visible but he's like tucked in the corner of the the ceiling and he will cast this um from his mouth he opens it up and like these firework purple and gold like magic happens and it's like this um sparkler torrent a spout of flame heading in both of the nameless employees directions. So he cast a uh, color spray, which is a dazzling array of flashing colored lights uh, roll six D 10. And then it is a pool of hit points that we can draw from to see um, how many of these creatures are affected. Using all my dice, baby. This is exactly what this is for. Okay. So this is a one and a nine, that's 10. And then eight and a six, that's 14, uh, 24 so far. And then uh, two and a two, that's another four. So 28 hit points. And Cool. Um, with that, then both of the uh, the nameless employees in the lounge look up to hear the <laughs> sparkling coming from the corner of the room, and then both of them <laughs> like start blinking their eyes violently and uh, are like swinging their heads around. And then it is now. Bud. How long does that last? Oh, a 15 foot cone. So, only three away. One, two, three. Okay, so like, Wishes is instead perched. One, two, three. Um, hmm. 15 foot cone. Each of these squares are three. He he can be just here and then just flying. <sighs> like hovering in the air, materializing. Yes, that's fine. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. So he's just flapping in the air. Um, he... Since he casts color spray, then his invisibility goes away. His superior invisibility goes away. And he releases this purple and gold sparkler torrent. And both of the nameless employees start blinking around wildly and desperately. Now, we will go into initiative. <laughs> Trying to think the best way to do this. I'll just do this. Jesus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, no. Where to go? Type. Yeah, I did not think this through. So, initiative. That's not how you spell initiative. But right now, I don't care. Initiative. Let's have everybody roll. Okay. 
Um, Tipsy wishes Glimmer. Oh, boy. Tipsy rolled a one plus a four, which is five. Wishes rolled a three plus dexterity, I guess. Oh, boy, an eight. Uh, three plus five, which is eight. Glimmer rolled a five plus a three, so also eight. Who has the highest dexterity? Wishes does. So Wishes goes first out of that. So, so far it's Wishes, Glimmer, then Tipsy. The two nameless employees. Uh, let's do one of these. Oh, geez. All right. Um, plus one. So nameless employee one got a 17. Nameless employee two got a 10. Because 16 plus one and then nine plus one. So those are nameless employees. So you are left, you are right. Um, and then the other boys. Let's do two, two, five plus three. So an eight as well. What is your dexterity, toot toot? Where's that card? Oh, it's squish now. Toot toot's dexterity is two. Glimmer, three. Okay, so you're going third, toot toot. With an eight, rock is 11 plus two, 13. And then onyx will be 18 plus zero. So the order is, <laughs> oh, Victor. Okay, so. 18 onyx let's have all of this left okay eighteen onyx um seventeen nameless employee left then rock thirteen um, with a 10 nameless employee right and then my three eights in a row so it's wishes and then glimmer and then toot toot and then last but certainly not least going up at the end is tipsy with a five mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Cool. Did I get everyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, I did it! Excellent. So, I will say that everyone else are like right here, waiting for the the go ahead from I will have Onyx go first alright so with this then Onyx here's a <coughs> um, and then he knows he, he's been in enough fights to know that that is the beginning of everything so his speed is 30 so 1, 2, 3 4 5 6 um, he'll just turn the corner. Yeah, he'll shove past the two. Oh wait, no, yeah, the the two sneaky smaller rogues, and he goes past and sees wishes fluttering around, and then he sees um the two nameless employees kind of staggering, one blinking, but both of them blinking. And the nameless employee on the left, the reason his arm was behind him is that he is dragging a re rather large anchor behind him. And then Onyx notices that and he goes, oh, nope. And then he, nope. And then he rages with his bonus action. He will rage. Um, and then now he is raging. Cool. Ah! 
So he is raging, which means cool shit later. One rage. He moved. He did a bonus action. Now he has another action. So he has two hand axes, which he can throw. So um, with both hand axes, um, he will also... Now, can he reckless attack? Is that also a bonus action? No, I don't think so. He cannot do two weapon fighting, though. He can only use one of the hand axes. Okay. Because two weapon fighting is considered a bonus action, but he used rage, so he can only throw one axe. He steps out, sees that one of the nameless employees is dragging behind him his ice anchor, and he goes, nope, <laughs> and throws the hand axe, which is a plus six. Uh, no, since he's throwing it, then it's dexterity, actually. So he will roll. That is a 19 plus two, and a 19 crits, um, it, he doesn't have his ice anchor, so it doesn't um, freeze the enemy. But uh, a 19 plus 2, a 21, then that does hit the um, one on the left. Um, so that is 1d4 plus 2. 1d4, let's see if I roll. No, let's use the other one because I don't want to roll like a third one on that 1d4. Oh, a four! So I'll roll this one on that one. So a four plus two, that's a six altogether. But um, when he chucks the... Uh, yeah, when he chucks the hand axe and it swings in the air and then thunk in the middle of the chest, but it kind of goes through and then you hear like this weird rustling noise, which and you hear from the other side of the nameless employee the clang 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 of the hand axe going through not doing as much damage as you think it would this nameless employee and you don't see blood or any gore um you just see these weapons pass through this form so a hint a clue so that's very good next uh, so that's his action and then all the shit. Rage damage. Plus two rage damage, only strength weapons. But he threw the dexterity. So I will not count that. Great. Now it is the nameless employee on the left. Then it is now blinded. So he will roll. Um, let's see. Because of Wish's color spray. Um, he will stumble tw forward. And then he will try multi-attack. Oh! Oh! This is amazing! Wow. Oh my god, I love this game. Wow. I didn't even think about that. So, this nameless employee who is just getting pummeled, one of the weapons is magical so it sticks, but the other two aren't so they don't. Um, and it's frustrated now because it can't use its terrifying glare. And it remembers wishes f materializing in the air, and then he can still hear the <laughs> flapping of its wings. So, he will stumble towards that way. Let's see, with a zero modifier to both intelligence and wisdom let's see if it remembers that there is an oversized chair in between it and wishes um which is a great little obstacle with a six uh nope and so he walks forward and then <coughs> kind of trips and falls let's see um uh let's do <laughs> Let's do cardinal directions to see which way the nameless employee falls. So I'm going to roll a 1d4. If it's a 1, then it's north, 2, east, 3, south, 4, west. 3. So it actually steps forward, but then it trips up and then falls backwards and uh, 
falls and is pretty much prone uh, because he was also dragging the ice anchor. So as he tripped, then the ice anchor drug him back backwards. And so then his movement, he tried to go forward, does a Dick Van Dyke, <laughs> does a Dick Van Dyke over the Ottoman. Um, so he falls backwards and now he is prone. So he could use the rest of his movement to stand up. So that is his movement. Um, 30 feet, 15 feet to stand up. He went one. Um, so yeah, let's see if he remembers, well, uh, with a natural one, then yeah, he, uh, got tussled and then now he's confused and he doesn't know his way around anymore. Like he doesn't know the spatial cardinal direction. So he actually goes onto the chair again and trips and then let's see which way he falls. And then a one, yeah, he does tumble forward, um, and splays out again prone on the ground but he doesn't have any more movement to get up so you are now prone i will write that on your thing prone nice and you are blind both of them are blinded so that's the first nameless employee on the left rock will step forward one two three how much movement does he have he has 25 because he has negative five to settle three four five five because he uh is a squishy um easily poppable wizard and there's a lot of he, he'll let the the physical people go first so that's rock and then he oh though he can do a ray of frost which might be cool so so that was one, two, three, four, f five. Yeah, he will be this way. One, two, three, four, five. He, yeah, he can't stand in glitter, and I'm going to round down so that he, he doesn't step this way. And then, oh, look, he just slides over that way. No. But he has a cantrip, which is called Ray of Frost. So let's see what the range of that is. He can try to cast it over, I was going to say Tiffany. But no, it's Tipsy. Tipsy's head. Ray of Frost. 60 feet. Oh, boy. <clears throat> hey, that's nice. So with the only nameless employee he sees, then... Um, oh, tricky, tricky. Because also, he is aiming over Tipsy's head, but has to be underneath... Wishes, but Wishes is also in the air flapping, and Nameless Employee Left is on the ground. So as long as Rock actually aims above Tipsy's head, which is easy because Tipsy is two foot ten and Rock is five foot eleven, then yeah, I I don't I won't roll I won't put any um, special modifications or anything on this. Like he's just pointing down on the ground, which technically range stuff does have disadvantage if someone is prone. Which is stupid. However, if someone's prone, then um, uh, melee attacks have advantage. So it kind of balances out weird. Ray of Frost. So range spell attack, however, it will be at disadvantage. So that's 11 plus 6, 17 that hits. And then a 17 plus 6, uh, 23. 20, yeah, 23. So the first number hit, I think it was a 17. Um, a ranged spell attack if hits 1d8 of cold damage. Look at all my dice on the on my table that are being used. They're going, thank you. I'm going to use the, the cooler ice um, one. So a three, three cold, and speed reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. So, boy, he's prone. He is blinded. Um... This nameless employee is not doing great. And then minus 10 feet of movement. Um, phew. So, um, with three... Yep, yeah, he takes the full, full three magic. Excellent. So this nameless employee on the left is looking pretty rough. And that was Rock's turn. Now nameless employee on the right, um, he is also blinded. 
how long does the color spray last? That's a very good question, Victor. Oh shit, and a cone. No, I did it like a triangle. That's fine. Starting. Creatures hit points. Well then, okay, conditions. Let's see how long blinded lasts. Okay, a blinded creature can't see and automatically fails any ability check that requires sight. Oh, attack rolls against the creature have advantage and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. So, Rock didn't have to take disadvantage because they canceled each other out, but he still rolled both of them. Interesting, it doesn't say how long blinded lasts. So, that's fun. Um, so, Nameless Employee on the right will hear um, the the flapping and then the general um, chaos and din happening northeast, northwest of him. So, he's going to... Um, run as much as yeah he's unimpeded so he will run this way and then feel his feet clump up against uh something on the ground to his left but hmm now i i will say i was gonna see if he would roll to see if he would hit the nameless employee on the ground but I'm going to give him a little bit of a fighting chance. But he can hear the <laughs> um, flapping of the wings of wishes to his right. And then, oh, shit. He's going to roll two claw attacks because it also cannot do its terrifying glare. So two claw attacks. Oh, that's not that bad. Oh, but it has disadvantage on both of them. Hey, because he has multi-attack. So nice. Very good. Um, let's roll for both attacks against wishes blind. So one's a six and one's a four. <laughs> hey, plus three to hit wishes has a 14, no, a 15 armor class, even better. So both of them miss for the first claw attack. So it uh, uh, like scrapes in the air and even with its eight inches of invisible claws, then it misses both and it's just ah, huffing and puffing and being real frustrated. Um, and then it's second claw attacks. One was a six and then the other was a 13 plus three. Oh, well, no, he rolled a 13, but it was at disadvantage. So it's a six, six plus three is nine, which does not hit, uh, wishes is 15 armor class so again he does two more claw attacks in the general um direction of wishes and then you could just hear <laughs> as wishes deftly avoids and he's having a little bit of fun like he doesn't realize that he's actually maybe in peril um wow this is amazing um because that color spray is really winning the day so that's nameless employee number two um wishes seeing that one is very badly hurt and the other one is blind and flailing about in the air, then it um, wishes will um, fly over Onyx's head and then just land kind of on that table. Um, which might be an opportunity attack yeah, I'll give it to him because they haven't done shit so far, the nameless employees. So hearing the flapping go away, then the nameless employee who whiffed four times will scrape through the air again uh, with a four. Oh, with disadvantage. So he rolled a 14 plus three. That would have been 17 against 15. But he also rolled a two. Boy, this is delicious. So then he misses again, and he's now facing towards Onyx. And Onyx <laughs> is kind of like wincing and ducking a little bit as Wishes lands on that table. Um, Then that is Wishes' turn, and Wishes is fine not doing anything else because now he's just watching the, the chaos, and he's far away now, and he's just enjoying the... 
um, the Din wishes. Now, Glimmer's turn. Um, Glimmer will... Uh, he threw his one dagger. <laughs> so it will... Now, would Glimmer... I'm going to roll something pretty important and see if Glimmer knows what these employees are nameless employees but there's something off about them um he has a plus one wisdom and a plus two uh, he has plus two wisdom so yeah let's roll because he's been working here for weeks he knows what's up with the owners but does he know about the employees deception insight yeah i'll give a plus four insight a 17 plus four. Awesome. So then Glimmer watching all of this action happen. Then as he's running for the corner, he's going, they're not. Uh, don't let them look at you with their eyes. And then one, two, three, four, five, because he has 30 feet. Yeah, he'll do that, and then um, that's his movement, and then he will uh, use uh, his action to hide. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so that's Glimmer's turn. And then Toot Toot coming out from the back. One, two. Oh, well, now I'll just do one. Can I do diagonally through a door? No. Oh, sure, why not? One, two, what is your movement? 30, two, three, four, five, six. Toot toot, what, what can you do, my dude? Um, huh, God's keyword. Ooh, let's do a classic cantrip so he doesn't waste any spell slots. Um, Okay, yeah, Toot Toot is kind of surveying everything um, and sees that the the two nameless employees are kind of just uh, struggling real hard. And he goes to the one standing up. He will cast Vicious Mockery, which is a cantrip, and he'll say, um, because he's also noticing that the employee just keeps missing. Yeah, he's just swiping fruitlessly in the air then tutu will say oh missing employee you've got a funny habit of swiping in the air and hitting nothing you buffoon <laughs> um and with that the nameless employee standing up the one on the right has to do a wisdom saving throw which is zero so four against tutu's spell save dc which is a 14 so uh, <laughs> the nameless employee on the right is swiping through the air ah, ah, and it will take 1d4 of psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its turn but it already has disadvantage because it's blind so 1d4 damage of, from tutut uh, that's a 4 baby awesome um Lovely, lovely. Everything's going great. Everything's going well. Rock has a bardic inspiration. Wishes. And then uh, Tipsy. Tipsy's up next. What can Tipsy do? Okay. Oh! Oh, this is going to be good. Then tipsy. Okay, so sneak attack for rogues. This is a, a matter of much. It, it's a debate of much talk in the Dungeons and Dragons circle. Sneak attack. You don't have to be hidden in order to get sneak attack for rogues. Sneak attack is technically if you have advantage on the attack and then some other qualifiers of like if you don't have disadvantage and then if the thing's not incapacitated and blah, blah, blah. So technically... If, t if Tipsy has advantage on the attack, then he'll get sneak attack, which is lovely. So Tipsy will step forward, kind of doing the really cool either Matrix or Boondock Saints where he's up against the wall and then he just turns and walks. 
just walks calmly one um two behind yeah he'll just sidestep behind onyx two three four um uh, totally avoiding the slashing of nameless employee number two on the right and then he'll go up behind the employee he he has advantage uh because advantage attacks on the nameless employees have have advantage because they're blind so he will take out two his two daggers just normal ass daggers not normal ass daggers those are different uh and he will use a bonus action to do two weapon fighting light melee weapons use bonus action to use second light melee weapon no ability modifier to damage bonus okay but tipsy will go up uh he will have advantage on both of these. So, um, a nine, <laughs> a nine plus a seven though, with a 16, that definitely hits the armor class of 11. So the first one hits, the first dagger hits, and then the second one, uh, with a seven plus seven, that's a 14. So they both hit and tipsy very just, super cool and calm and uh, action movie hero whips out two daggers like <laughs> very much loki um whipping the two daggers out and then hurrah, crossing both of them in front of his face and then uh they slash like the back of the legs of nameless employee number two on the right and what is the damage on that so it's one d4 plus four and then just another d4 so both of these together plus four um that is a four Plus four, eight. Um, what? Oh, right. Great. So he swipes both of them and then ugh, the nameless employee falls forward where Wishes was in the air and is no longer moving on the ground. And again, there's no blood, but as soon as Tipsy does, then there's like this in, invisible, like, spray it's not spray on his face but like there's this material that just falls on tipsy's face and onyx's face since he's right there and like just brushes off and is kind of a little itchy and tipsy's like wow what the ah, 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 this is spider web <laughs> and then um so this nameless employee falls forward and it's dead so let me I, I'm not going to draw an X over him because we know he's not there. Um, so Onyx's turn next. So Onyx sees the nameless employee number two right fall in front of him and then sees the nameless employee number one left, left on the ground and struggling to like lift up the ice anchor to, to hit. And Onyx goes, Mop. and then steps onto nameless employee uh number two which technically that'll eat up some of his movement speed but he doesn't care and then with the he only has okay so he has just one hand axe left but huh i like it oh no Okay, so he saw that the one hand axe kind of went through him and didn't do a lot of damage, so he goes, oh, fuck him. So as he steps on the nameless employee number two, then he puts the hand axe back, and he will actually, like, grapple to wrench the ice anchor from... Well, he also has rage, so that would be a whole action. Um, also, he did reckless attack, so cancel out on him, but no one tried... Let's see. No, okay. So since Onyx is just furious and he has rage and like, boom, 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 like his whole brain is pulsating behind his eyes and like his vision is tunneling with black vignette around it. Then he walks up with his hand axe still drawn and sees the. <laughs> nameless employee just kind of 
squirming around and trying to lift up his ice anchor. No! Yeah! So, he will do reckless attack even though mechanically it'll do nothing because it's already on the ground and it's... Okay, so let's actually count that out. Onyx would do, before the attack, will do a reckless attack, which is on the first attack, advantage on melee weapons using strength. Attack rolls have against me. Oh, okay. But nameless employee number one is already on the ground, so melee attacks would have advantage. That's two. Nameless employee number one is also blinded, so that's another advantage. Three. So Onyx has, like, three advantage. I will roll three times because that's fun, damn it. This is my show. I will do whatever I want. So he will stand up with his hand axe. Jeez. All right. A three, nine, and 11. The 11 will it will definitely hits without any of the modifiers, which is plus four strength. So 15. Then, yeah. Onyx. And then a hand axe is 1d4 plus four. Three plus four seven. Run it, round it down. Ba, 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 da, ba. Then Onyx hacking the. Oh, this is interesting. Hacking the nameless employee to bits and pieces. But what we see is this nameless employee, this bland, average, plain-looking human man with no distinguishing facial features or anything of note that looks almost like a twin to the other nameless employee, which is on the ground, then, like, he's being, like, his arm is being a, detached from his body, and, like, as Onyx keeps hitting, then, like, his body parts are separating from each other, but, again, there's no blood, and... It's a, a tactile sensation of, like, almost a stuffed animal or something. There's something invisible that is not any of the organic bodily functions of a normal human. And um, the one employee is being weighed down and squashed by Onyx standing on top of him. And then... The other one is just being hacked to pieces, but it's not as gory as you'd think. It's it's fine, I promise. So then Onyx, we're technically out of combat because they're super, super dead. Onyx reaches over and grabs his ice anchor, rips it off from the gra remaining grasp of nameless employee number one on the left, and then looks back to the group going, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> and they walk forward so onyx just trudges out that's great they didn't have a chance to do nothing all right so everyone like assembles behind him uh that's fabulous that's awesome let's see does anyone say anything or do anything now that they are here Yes, after the defeat, then Rock actually, from far away, rushes towards the manicure station and very a la Tipsy opens his bag and then just, like, shoves, like, swipes everything on the desk into his bag. So, future Victor will roll for that to see what the significance is, but he does that, which is great. Um... And then as they start heading, as Onyx starts heading this way towards the door to the lobby, then Glimmer, emerging from his corner, goes, Well, actually, the door outside is, is down these double doors. Which everyone forgot. <laughs> and then Onyx goes, Oh, all right, yeah. And then Toot Toot's still walking this way, go, well, well, I bet, But my weapons, my, uh, my didgeridoo and my the motherfucker... And then Onyx, oh, yeah. And so he then turns around and then, um, yeah, he doesn't wait for anyone. So he kicks open that door to an empty, quiet, dark lobby where 
yeah, you can hear muffled, gentle lapping of the hot springs through the double doors on the north, and then nothing else except that, like, um, creepy, skipping record. Here, hold on. I want you all to hear this, because it's good fully. Of the song overhead. And Onyx, very much like Secret Service, goes, All right, you're clear. And then toot toot, ah, ha, ha, ah, oh, I'm just going to go over to number one to get my stuff. But he he makes it like five feet into the lobby and then sees discarded the um, didgeridoo and the three necked loot on the ground because you get a sense that these nameless employees were going through the remaining stuff in the footlocker and my tipsy and rock just got everyone's stuff out of there. So they managed to get the ice anchor, but they didn't care about the didgeridoo or the um, three necked loot. So (sighs) yeah, with a 19, then Tutu goes, oh, no. So he picks up the didgeridoo and, and checks it and doesn't see any major damage. But the the loot, he's like, most of the strings are broken. Oh, uh, I don't know what strings they were. Like, oh, I'm going to have to fix that. Blast. Oh, wait, I have mending. So, but still, that's effort. Ugh. So disappointed then Tutu puts away his um yeah one of the necks is like completely broken off too oh come on because i rolled on the red uh villain die and it came up a 19 so that means that the nameless employees went and then just broke it so all of that is good um then toot toot walks back into the lounge and then onyx follows Um, Tipsy will run up to the employees. Interesting. And then as a good rogue ought to, then he will... I'm gonna go through the bodies! Let's see what they have on them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tipsy goes through the bodies, and as he's 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 going through the pockets and stuff, and there's nothing of value, there's no coins, no keys, but as he's going through kind of the bits and pieces of Nameless Employee number one, then he's, like, touching grass and stuff. He's like, ah, ah, but it's invisible, so he's, like, touching it and going, oh, 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 it's really creepy. And um, he kind of, like, he pats down things and he can't feel anything of value. So he like detaches and walks away. He goes, Glimmer, uh, you can't tell me what that is, but that's really bad. That's gross. So wait, hold on. Are they human? <laughs> is that a no? Uh, and then Glimmer goes, yes, that is a bit confusing. Ask me the first question again. Gl- Glimmer, are, are they human? And then Glimmer shakes his head. No. Oh, Okay. That makes a lot of sense. (laughs) And Tipsy like claps his hands. Rock got um, stuff off of that table. And as everything starts to settle, then Tipsy actually looks towards the bar. Ah, Tipsy. And he will roll a constitution saving throw to see if he's tempted. With an 11 plus constitution... uh, 10, or no, 11 plus a zero, then Tipsy is walking towards the bar just in a trance, and then thump, 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 Onyx comes out of nowhere and then slaps him real hard across the face, and Tipsy goes, ow! Yeah, man, good call. Ow, good call. Ow. And let's say that's the last little bit of Onyx's rage. So that's an unarmed strike. Uh, 
a 9 plus 6. But Tipsy has a 17 armor class, not a 15. So he does not get any damage from that. But Tipsy goes, ow. Yeah, that that snapped me out of it. Hey, thanks, man. I got you, buddy. Yeah. So let's go. And then... Ooh, whoop. This is going very well so far, y'all. It's it's very, very good. So, Tip... Toot Toot um, actually rushes forward a little bit and kind of steps and slides in invisible nameless employee. He goes, ah, oh, yeah, that is unpleasant. So he goes over there and goes, Glimmer, I actually explored this hallway before, um, but... I don't know what was in those two rooms. So you were saying that the magical treatments are done in this hallway with the wooden doors one and two. And then Glimmer says, well, so I can say stuff off of the um, the sales pitch, the brochure, the pamphlet of the Restful Lily. So, oh, he can actually read what's in the book now. So for T7, those are the treatment rooms, but not the magical treatment room. Um, guests who request haircuts, shaving, waxing, or massages are tended to in these treatment rooms. Um, these adjoining chambers, dimly lit. Glimmer says this as they all start walking through the hallway. Because I can uh, do double. I can... Okay, so kind of knowing they're not in immediate danger. Then they start filing in. Yeah. So it is Glimmer and Tutut leading the way, followed by Rock and Tipsy, both with their pets, which is the fairy dragon, and um, Waddles the rat. And Onyx is... Um, What's the word for it? Is behind, is bringing up the rear. Bang, there it is. And Glimmer says, These adjoining chambers, dimly lit with shrouded lamps, are each furnished with a bed whose frame can be tilted and folded into different positions. Um, shelves and counters hold an array of perfumes, oils, and lotions, and scented candles that fill the room with a pleasantly invigorating scent. Uh, yes, um, our masseuse and barber, his name is Ilmar, um, I don't know where he is, but he is also one of the good ones. Uh, the n nameless employees, which you have vanquished, congratulations, heroes, um, they were not good. I, I feel that they were not good, but Ilmar, wherever he is, um, he is good, so here we go. And then they go towards the exit. And then Toot Toot stops them right before. <sighs> Glimmer, is there anything we should know before we head out in this open expanse towards two buildings? Are we going to the one on the right or are we going to the one on the left? And then Glimmer kind of stares at him with apologetic wide eyes. Hmm? Right, you can't tell. But you do know. You know. But mm, brr, blast. Okay. Shall we go? And, um, yeah, they do. Mmm. All right. Um, I'm going to call an intermission right there because I need to use the restroom. But, uh, fascinating. What a great combat where the, like, and I gave them a couple chances to do something, but they just kept fucking up. So that's great. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, I'm going to <clears throat> use the restroom real quick, and I will be right back. Enjoy intermission. Hello, I am Tutu the Loxodon Bard, and while Victor is taking his intermission, I wanted to talk to you about maintaining your vocal health. This is very important because I am quite a big boy. Um, consume one half of your body weight in ounces of water daily. So as a Loxodon, as an elephant kin, I would normally do this with my trunk, but alas... Victor has a normal human nose. So this is 32 ounces of water. Here we go.
Many more ounces to go, but later. Enjoy the rest of this intermission. Hi, I'm Victor Rivera, and this is D&Me where I play with myself. I play D&D with myself. This is an actual play show, 5th edition, where I DM and play four characters of campaigns past. Hi, I am Tipsy the Forest Gnome Rogue. We stream Wednesday nights on Twitch, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we throw the video up on YouTube Thursday mornings. And I have a rat named Waddles, he's cute! I'm Onyx the Dwarf Barbarian. We do other stuff. I'm Rock the half Orc Wizard. We do D&D artistry and art stream on Tuesday nights. And d and like to drink one Monday a month, where we grab a glass of something good and chat about how d and going, answering audience questions, but mostly going on tipsy tangents. That's me! And I am Toot Toot the Loxodon Bard. If you want to catch up with the current campaign, listen to the first episodes in their edited podcast form, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor.fm, and others. And if you want to catch up even quicker, watch d and Recaps, where we summarize five episodes of d and at a time. And we also have d and Extras, which are fun little behind-the-scene videos. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a bunch of other places where? On our link tree, that's linktr.ee slash dnmeadventures and like gnome. Thanks! <laughs> We're so professional. Yeah, baby! Yes, we are. Great! I'm back. Um, this is exciting because we're going into more stuff that I, I have no idea. So, um, yes. Hello, welcome back. So, as everybody leaves the restful lily... Oh, no. Has... Has it been this banner this whole time? I hope so. Because I clicked the wrong... Ooh. I hope so. Um, so, as everyone... Shite. As everyone exits the Restful Lillian bathhouse, then they go out into, like, this dark backyard. And to the right, so we see, oh, how, how would that work? Okay. On the left... Okay, on the left we see the shrine, which this crumbling stone building once built must have been a beautiful shrine. Engraved images of Seyun are still visible on the moth's colored... <clears throat> Take two. This crumbling stone building must once have been a beautiful shrine. Engraved images of Seyun are still visible on the moss-covered stones, her face gazing down on the path by which the faithful would have approached. Stone doors at the front of the shrine appear to be sealed shut by some sort of thick, clear resin. Maybe sealant! A faint inscription is still visible above them, but we can't see because we're far away. And then... Um, on the right is the tower. So let's zoom out a little bit. Zoom out. And then... The tower. A finely crafted stone tower rises among the trees not far from the bathhouse. A statue of a sharp-featured winged elf crouches above the front door whose bright red surface is decorated with golden swirls. Ooh, fun. So, um... Toot Toot goes, okay, so we are here to rescue Circumstance, which we have figured out that they might be in um, the tower getting the magical treatment. So shall we to the tower, and then we can figure out the shrine later, perhaps? And then Glimmer, like, nods and chirps up. We just need to get... Be very careful when approaching this shrine, okay? Because it might be under a watch. I do like how he's slightly Irish. Because Irish uses a lot of the mouth. Well, that I think that was Scottish, but... So, hmm. Let's see, let's see. Can... What is... Oh... So Rock has Identify, which is a touch spell, isn't it? I believe it's touch. Yup, he has to touch it. Okay, so. (sighs) 
um, everybody starts walking down the path, and then they get close to <clears throat> the um, the crouched stone elf, and oh, okay. Can you see all my stuff? Don't look at my stuff. All right. Um, then, what, what, what is that? I didn't see that coming. Okay. So, as they walk towards, then hearing Glimmer's hint of things might be watched, then as they approach the um, the door, then they look above to see the statue, just stone statue, being there, and. <clears throat> Rock leans forward to Glimmer. Glimmer, is that statue more than a statue? And then Glimmer, like, leans backward just with the open wide face. And then uh, Rock goes, ah, okay. And then without moving his lips much, then <clears throat> Rock goes, Everyone, we need to be very careful. Hmm. Okay. What do I do? What do I do? What the heck? Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So they're at a door. They are staring at a statue right now. Um. <clears throat> Then Rock charging up. Uh -huh. Rock whispers, and Rock feels that uh, he only has mere moments. So, Glimmer, have you ever... Shit. Okay. Has Glimmer been inside the tower? Probably. Glimmer, have you ever been inside the tower? Then Glimmer nods. Okay. Do you know what that statue is? Then Glimmer nods. Is it a bad statue? Then Glimmer nods. And Rock goes, okay, that's fine enough with me. Hoo and then Rock will do the, um... Oh, can Rock do... No. Rock will do another ray of frost at this um, at this uh, statue. So, oh boy, <gasps> that's not good. Okay, well, I said it. So, what is the woof? All right. Um, so Rock will do the surprise round. Ray of Frost. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Ray of Frost. Range spell attack. Plus six. Oh, shit. Well, that's not great. So 
um, Rock releases uh, Ray of Frost, and Rock was trying to, like, not make eye contact with it to not make it suspicious, but with a three plus six, it does not meet. That nine does not meet the 15 armor class of the statue, and it um, kind of... Um, reaches very far wide and then um, makes a uh, kind of splashes frost and like crystallizes and ices on the side of the tower and then you hear the of the statue's head now facing towards rock and rock goes well shit so now let's bring that initiative back up Oh, boy. Well, this is uh, combat for those who wanted combat. What did the statue look like? <sighs> A sharp-featured winged elf. Bright red surface is decorated with gold swirls. Neato. Um, let me bring up a token template. And... Uh, in the chat, could you please rem please say yes or no if uh, the banner was up for the first half of the show? I hope it was. So, bop, bop. Select inverse. Let's do a red. I see what you did there. With golden swirls. It was the restful lily. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Perfect. A golden swirl. And it's perched above the door in like a little alcove. All right, let's roll again. I will just have... That's not how you spell initiative, is it? I don't know. I will just have all of these remain the same. Let's take out nameless employees because they are dead. Dead like a duck at dead. Nice. Now... Using the red die, uh, again, I roll to see which dice want to play tonight. So I had a lot of great choices for, for dice. So initiative, uh, one. So that's great. One plus zero. So it is dead last. That's even better. Statue. Okay. <laughs> so up first is Onyx in this new initiative combat. And then Onyx looks up. Uh, hey, come, come down there. <laughs> and he, he walks kind of up towards the base of the tower. No, he actually shoves past through everyone. Come, come down here. Let me get your bed. Shut, shut it. And he tries to swing his ice anchor, and he goes, all right, fine. And he will <sighs> take out. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, yeah, again, it is assumed, if I don't say, uh, that Glimmer picked up his uh, dagger, and then Tipsy got his magically auto magical automatic throwing knife back and his dagger, and then Onyx got back his second hand axe. So, um, yeah. <laughs> he will, so Onyx will use reckless attack on both of these attacks to throw his uh, two hand axes up because he can do two weapon fighting. Light melee weapon bonus action to use a second light melee uh, yeah. 
he is n not raging because he lost it when after the other the nameless employee battle so onyx and then <laughs> chucks the hand axe upward towards the statue and with advantage uh, that is a seven plus two nine does not hit the 15 so the first <laughs> so the first one fall flies upwards and it kind of ding, cling 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 and then falls back down and he goes no, sugar, and then throws the second one um and both of those were sevens so definitely not and then the other one clangs to the side and he goes well fuck and then he gets into a rage because, yeah, that's frustrating. So, yeah, he spends a second rage. Oh, that's not great. But, yeah, he will rage after all of that. Well, no, he can't because it. the bonus action is to use the two-weapon fighting. So he cannot. Ooh, that saved a, a resource that he should probably save for later, but he doesn't know that. Onyx goes up first. Rock goes, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he... Let's see. He does have some magic. Yeah, he'll do magic missile, baby. A classic. Magic missile. Ooh, let me just... Yeah, I can take this sheet out so that I can have my magic open. Excellent. Magic missile, which I thought was a cantrip, but it's a... Three darts. Each dart deals one plus... One d4 damage plus one force. So that it... It automatically hits, much like the magical automatic throwing knife. So all three of those hit. Um, damage resistance. Okay, well, um, they take the full brunt of this. So six plus two, eight plus three. That's 11 damage. Lovely. Okay, and so from its perch then um a not successful f ray of frost then is replaced with three successful magic missiles which take the form of like three purple quills that psh, launch out of R rock's wrist and it psh, 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 and then psh, 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 each hits and then like chunks of stone psh, psh, like crumble off explode outward oh boy all right so this is the danger of them not resting because rock has two spent spell slots and one and two spent level one spell slots so he's not gonna be much use for much longer and he still has that bardic inspiration that i wrote down um so that is rock's turn um yep Wishes goes next. Wishes. What's that? I like that. Nope. Uh. <sighs> oh, okay. Nope. Wishes won't do anything. Wishes will just turn invisible and just watch from back here. Um, so with that, actually, because that'll be fun, Wishes is now invisible. So his opacity, opacity that doesn't sound right. So Glimmer, um, uh, Glimmer says, we need to defeat this before it goes and tells uh, of us being here. Wow. Um, a struggle to get out. But all he has is... Oh, but all he has is his one dagger. So he could throw it. Yeah, why not? He'll throw it. Um... 
yeah, that's really not a great situation to be in. One dagger. That's a seven. Jeez, they're not really hitting nothing. One dagger plus five. Yeah, that doesn't hit the 15 armor class. That 15 armor class is real big. Um, so the dagger flies upwards and then clings back down to... Um, Glimmer goes, ah, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, crack, crack, crack. And then Toot Toot, oh, butts. Oh, Toot Toot spent a vicious mockery, which is a cantrip. So, yeah, he will do that. Who has range stuff? Huh. No one really has a lot of range stuff. Toot Toot with the Vicious Mockery goes, um... Can he do anything? Toot Toot! Man, I need to figure out Toot Toot, because... Oh, nope. All right. Toot Toot will go, um, this is a very good use of this spell, so... Um... <sighs> Statue. 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 I'm thinking of a statue song. Statue. Still. Statue. I don't know. I, I can't think of one right now. But he will point upwards and go... Um, I, I don't have a song. Um, he will use Shatter against this stone creature. Shatter, Constitution saving throw on the statue's part, 3d8 thunder or half. It's a 10-foot sphere, uh, 60 feet range. Inorganic ma material has disadvantage. Yeah, that's going to be good. Let's see. Statue still perched. Um, what's that song? Um step back from that come down from that ledge my fiend which Jim Carrey did in Yes Man where he talked Luis Guzman from step like jumping off a building sure why not <laughs> so that's a constitution saving throw at disadvantage that's very good constitution is plus three yikes he, the spell save DC is 14 so this statue will roll a four whoo Baby, that's and an 18. Hoo -hoo. Good thing it was at disadvantage. So that four plus three, that's a seven. So that is three D eight thunder damage. Thunder, 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 thunder. Toots. <laughs> and then Tipsy goes, <laughs> I mean, come on. Um what was it? Three D eight? Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a D eight, here's another D eight. 3d8 thunder damage so that's a one an eight so a nine and then um nine six fifteen that's great and that is is that right yeah cool that's great so then Toot toot with the step back from, or step, to, come down from that lane, ledge, my friend. Shattered by the Rolling Stones. Ooh. Here, I will listen to that. I will bring it up um, in, in a YouTube on this computer. Shattered by the Rolling Stones. And then I will listen to it and see if it, like, is good background music and intense fighting. Because this is two fights in a row here. Shut up! Call me! This is great. Chattered. <laughs> That's a very good way to start a song. Chatter. Um, This feels like the Guardians of the Galaxy now, where I have this song pumping through my head, and it's a fight scene. Great. And then Tipsy, who just laughed at the um, thunder toot, then he will, 
let's see. I don't want him to do the automatic throwing knife again, because that's not fun. Um, then he goes, you know what? Yeah, let's go with that. And then he will pull out one of his Molotov cocktails. Um, ooh. Ding, ding, dun, dun, ding, ding, dun. Da, 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 da. Um, I will roll something, and if it rolls... 15 or above then something real cool happens that's a seven so it doesn't um so tipsy goes man i wish i got that pink champagne on ice from the room but here i'll just use one of my, these empty bottles and so he prepares the molotov cocktail and then and then throws it up at the um um statue and what is what is the mechanic how, how do i roll that? oh oh okay there we go so one Molotov cocktail, he rolls 10 to throw it. Um, so he just needs a five or better. And that's a nine. So a 19, the Molotov with the shattered, like f- spins upwards and then hits one of the dents caused by the thunder damage of Toot Toot and then to the drums and the beat of this song. And um, that is 1d8 fire damage and 2d6 shrapnel damage and plus four. So that's a lot of damage. And some of it will rain down on Glimmer and Toot Toot and Onyx because they're right there. Um, So that's not good. The statue has bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical attacks um piercing though so the shrapnel will be at disadvantage well resistant the um statue has damage resistance against bludgeoning piercing and slashing so thunder was good um what else hit oh the magic missile which is a magical though um, so this non-magical Molotov cocktail fire will do full damage, but the piercing from the glass will be at resistance. All right. Um, oh, it's down to half points now. So that's good. Um, you can see that the statue is starting to like crumble significantly. Um, and Glimmer's going, yes, yes, good. Uh, this, this, we need to get rid of it. So the Molotov cocktail hits. So it does hit. And then you can see like this <laughs> bout of flame going up. So that's 1d8 fire damage. Uh, no, let's do this die. Um, I'm using these dies, which is great because it looks very much like stone. Not the redstone that I was talking about, but like these are really good, like just normal stone um okay um and then i will roll for the fire damage that's two wow two two fire damage so it takes the full two great and then okay and then it's 2d6 shrapnel which I don't remember if I have shrapnel damage. Shrapnel. I think I worked out that it's like 10 feet radius of the shrapnel going outwards. I'll say that the fire just licked up the statue, but the, um, the shrapnel will hit the three underneath. Yep. Well, okay, no, just Onyx, because if it's 10 feet, then if the statue's above the doorway, then that's some, and then diagonally the hypotenuse, which is the only use that I've gotten from A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Thanks, public education system, public school system. So it'll just hit Onyx, who is just a, a, a tank of hit points. So he is the best one to take that, honestly. Um... So, 2d6 shrapnel, uh, which is a 1 and a 5, so that's 6. It will take half of that. 
Um, and then six. But at the end of everything, then it also takes four damage because that was the modifier of the thing. Oh, but it probably will just take half. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So that's its current hit points. Um, then with that six, it rains down on Onyx as well, the shrapnel. And he just is looking up. And then uh, the pieces, the shattered pieces of the bottle, think, jing, 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 like stab into his face and on his shoulders. And he's just looking up. To him, it's just like light rain. He doesn't care. So that is six damage um, to Onyx, which he is not raging, so he gets the full six. Instead of if he was raging, then it's uh, he's resistant to all damage except for Psychic. So that... <sighs> Lovely. Um, and now it's the statue's turn. The statue... I want to make an informed decision because um, it it is below health it is below half points right now. I'll just tell y'all. Um, it had 52 points at the beginning and now it has 19 points. So I divided 19 by 52. That is 36.5. So it wants to fly away right now, but it has. What's 100 minus 36.5? It has 63% or 63.5% chance of its wings not working because of the various thunder damage and um, uh, Molotov cocktail damage and magic missile damage. So I will roll, ooh, I will roll percentage die, which is a D100, which is a, oh boy, look at this. I'm using all my dice. Um, that's not it, though. Okay, so it is a D10 and a D100. If it is... Oh, that's great. What a great, good use of it. If it is less than 36.5, so I'll round that down. 30... I'll round it up. 37. If it's less than 37, then... It can fly away. Okay. So it just getting, boom, uh, let's see, dunk, 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 shattered. And the just this assault from ranged weapons, which I didn't really think I had. Then it like, ow, wincing, then it's claws. Like its stony arms are batting away these projectiles and then it launches off. But um, we can see as it looks behind and its wings were like <laughs> shattered off and fall off and it like tumbles forward in the air. And uh, let's see. One, two, three. Um, whoa, wow. Wow. One, it will fall uh, to the left of this clumping. Two, it'll fall into the clumping. Three, it'll fall to the right. Four, five, six. Uh, let's do that one. And two. Four. So one, two, three, four. It will fall to the left. So it falls and then hits the ground and like crumbles. Ah. Uh, does it take falling damage? No, it's a f winged creature. So I'm going to say no. So um, this uh, winged statue, sharp-featured elf, red stone with golden swoves falls ugh, to glimmer. That's not going to be good. And it will... Oh! It will do multi-attack. The... Statue makes two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. So it will claw down at Glimmer and then bite at Rock. Uh, it will get up using the rest of its movement. Well, 
Yes. Yep, because it's, it's in defense mode right now. So it will claw, claw down at Glimmer, which is a plus four to hit. Ooh, Glimmer has a 14 armor class. No, it has a 13 armor class. Yikes. That's a 13. Hit it. Oh, shit. But that's not that bad. Um, it's a 1d6 plus 2 piercing damage. So 5. Shit. Um, plus 2. So that's 7 piercing damage. So Glimmer is now... Um, to half health because he had 14 hit points um so that mighty claw oh that was a bite attack it's the same damage actually so the statue looks frantically around and sees this crowd in front of it and then slashes down at this betrayer employee and um gouges glimmer pretty bad so the white feathers that have purple outline are scratched uh and you can see some um blood trickling down its front and glimmer goes owie, owie, and just screeching and chirping um and then the statue turns to rock who was the first thing to attack it four times um and it'll bite towards him. So that's, again, four to hit. Plus four. Um, and then I will roll. Rock has a 15 armor class now because of mage armor. Oh, with an 18. Eighteen. 15. Uh, would this kill him if I don't do anything? No, it won't. So he will take, but also he's very squishy, but also he has three spell levels left. So, no. Rock always gets hit. Rock always gets hit. Um, yep. 1d6 plus 2 piercing damage. Three! Woo! Not the worst! So, three plus two, five. Uh, Rock is down to four hit points, so he will be just always in the back. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. And the statue with, like, surprisingly sharp rock, sharp stone teeth, sharp rock teeth go up against Rock. And, uh, sink in to like rock's neck and rock goes ow ow this sucks <laughs> and the statue excuse me the statue like wanted to fly upwards to like it had programming but now it's in self-defense mode so it's just gonna stay right there and then onyx who Interesting, interesting, interesting. Onyx, who saw it tumble and not successfully take flight, will pick up his two hand axes and then, fuck this, and then put it up, put both of them up. Now that this quarry is on the ground, then he will, doom, doom, with the ice anchor. And then he will reckless attack, because he's right there and he doesn't want to use rage. This is real smart. So that is advantage on the ice anchor, which is gonna be good, gonna be good. Woo! One was a four, and then one was a 17. So that's 17 plus six, 23. Yeah, it definitely hits. So that's 2d6 plus 1d4 ice damage. Plus six. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby. Ooh, you love to see it. Whoa, that's full damage all across the board. So, that both 2d6s were 6 and 6. The 1d4 was 4. So, this is full damage. That's great. Plus 6. So, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22. Oh, that's gorgeous. So, Onyx, now thankful that this statue landed, 
goes over to it and goes, yeah, no, bye. And then with the ice anchor, and the statue already chipped and missing half of, missing almost two thirds of its corporeal form. Then the ice anchor connects and with the ice, let's see, the frost ray didn't hit, but the fire scorched side, then it just, all the pieces ended up breaking and the stone the statue just shatters completely and um crumbles to the ground and they uh successfully took care of that shat the uh, statue and glimmer goes whoo that is very good because if they left if that statue had successfully flown to one of the windows then they would know that we are here and tutu goes well that would have absolutely freaking sucked so let's go in um and they will um then glimmer goes well i don't have a key and I would assume that the door is locked. And Tutu, who's right there, will just reach for the door and try it. And it sure is locked. So he will step back and go, Tipsy. And then Tipsy's, like, strutting forward um, as he pulls out his um, two Thieves Tools supplies in one Thieves Tool kit says to his left, hey, sorry about the shrapnel um, raining down on you, Onyx. And then Onyx goes, the what? <laughs> As, it, like, there's small little pieces of glass sticking out of his face. And then Tipsy goes, ah, never mind. And then he will um, roll. Whew, that's two intense uh, combats right there. Um, he will roll sleight of hand to pick up this lock. With a 19 plus 7, that's a 26. He successfully does so. And then, whoa, come on now. Then he opens the door and then, are we, are we good to go in? Um, what's his name? Glimmer? And then Glimmer goes, uh, yes, I believe so. Let's check it out. So, excuse me. Wow. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. So. Oh, well, I guess this part is also. As they enter into the stone tower, then what is T13? The tower foyer. This foyer has a central spiral staircase leading up. The staircase is flanked by two closed doors, each one set in the middle of a stone wall. A thin... What? Oh, shit. A thin... Wait, no, hold on. Huh. Okay. Cool, because it, it, it's mentioning something that I kind of already did. So I will just say that um, fascinating, fascinating. Oh, what a great show. Um, so, yes, the spiral staircase and then two doors on either side. And there's like a rug and two ferns. Between two ferns. Um, so Tipsy goes inside. And then Glimmer goes in. Toot toot. I'll stay back here. Rock will definitely stay like behind. Um, and then 
invisible wishes. Hey, <laughs> that's great. So, <laughs> Toot Toot will ask Glimmer. Oh, boy. It's clever that I cursed Glimmer, but also, wait a second. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, <clears throat> two closed doors. Uh, the the floor is open for discussion on where to go next. Toot toot. Always the leader goes, all right, should we go upstairs? Should we check out these doors? Um, my one flaw in in doing this campaign blind is i don't i don't know what to do without looking ahead so um toot toot will just go Shh, any objection to going to the door to the left and then uh everyone goes ah, no it's fine let's do it uh, it's locked so let me go ahead and unlock it ding, ding, ding. tipsy will roll again 16 plus 7 that's 23 and then he unlocks it oh boy oh boy uh oh did i just do a bad oh no 15 hmm Hmm, okay. So, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. Wow. All right. Ew. Oh, shit. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Okay. So, Tipsy successfully unlocks that. And, every, well, yeah, everyone goes inside. I'll do that in a second. But, magical light illuminates this room, which has an oversized chair, heavy curtains covering the windows, and a large, ornate wooden chest. Um, Okay. Oh. No, stop. There's Chainco.
there's circumstance. There's Peggy. There's Morgana. There's Anti Warm Heart. And the Mastiff. No. I will say it's Chainco, but there's all the owners and Chainco right there. Holy shit. Okay. So Tipsy unlocks the door and then opens it. And then the very tall, intimidating um, figure that is Peggy, like the door thump, bumps into Peggy and she looks down. What are you doing? Ah! And then Tipsy looks into the room and sees... Auntie Warmheart sitting in the, oh, oh, God, sitting in her wheelchair. Um, holding like three paint buckets in her lap. The Mastiff is sitting to her side, staring at Chainco diligently, like right in front of Chainco. And Morgana is standing up against the wall. Um, with a painting. Yeah, okay, cool. <sighs> it's not even that I'm lightheaded or dizzy. It's just this is literally the worst, absolutely worst thing that could have happened. And I wouldn't have known. So <sighs> the scene is Tipsy is entering into the room. He just unlocked the door. Peggy is right there, um, standing guard. Run, says Dodie, or something. Yeah. Um, Auntie Warmheart is sitting in her wheelchair holding some paints. Morgana is putting the finishing touches on this painting. And Chainco is wearing... Chainco, the hairless dwarf, has his... Um, yeah, he probably would. He has his um, wig and his fake beard to his side. And he is sitting on a chair with his robe um, tastefully drooped down around his shoulders and still in his lap. But we can see in full display that this is a, a, a magically alopecia dwarf. But we see the painting that Morgana is doing. Do we see the painting? Um, Tipsy, who is I absolutely fucked, will do a perception check around the room. With a natural 20, then he sure does. Uh, natural 20 plus 8 perception. Then Morgana is at the easel painting, but then Tipsy can see just... It, it's perfectly positioned where... No one else can see what the painting is except Tipsy. And we see a, a very heroic portrait of Chainco standing like proudly, openly 
on this like mountain cliff edge and there's forest behind him and vanquished monsters of all sorts but standing proud with a shirt buttoned to like completely unbuttoned except for like the last two chest brimming overflowing with um chest hair and this long fabio mane floating in the wind and this impressive beard that's braided and also super puffy and like every inch he almost looks werewolf uh lupine with uh, his arms completely hairy and hair on the back of his wrists and on his knuckles as he's proudly standing there and like with very <laughs> tight generous biker shorts and his legs are completely hairy and he's got hobbit feet just this full hair stoot dwarf picturesque and morgana stops painting and then um like you can see a surprised auntie warm heart tilt her head blindly towards the door and um then she goes oh well it looks like you are next and that ladies and gentlemen and adventurers and gamers and watchers and enjoyers of D&D that is the most dreadful place to end this episode. I will not be able to sleep tonight or tomorrow night. And oh boy, if I thought, well, was, we had a cliffhanger. Holy yikes. Yeah. What was the other cliffhanger we had? A while ago. Well, this one's even worse. So, thank you very much for watching. I'm I'm stu I'm beyond stunned. I would have sworn, I would have bet a thousand dollars that they were gonna be upstairs. But, but there you go. So let me. All right. Uh, before next week's totally total party kill tpk thank you very much for watching and listening i am victor rivera and this is d and me a one-man show where i play D, D with myself i stream wednesday nights on twitch at 7 p.m eastern standard time and i upload the video the following morning thursdays on my youtube page today's show will be up tomorrow thursday may 26th and next week's episode will be live wednesday june 1st um, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a bunch of other places where on my link tree. That's linktr.ee slash Adventures. And like Gnome, I roll, I normally roll to see which of my characters gets tonight's outro, but we are week four out of four. So the remaining character that has not done an outro is Toot Toot. And take it away, Toot Toot. Um, Shit. All right. Well, shit. Okay, good night. <laughs>